Jacob used 240 to pass two different exams, including the FTCE Exceptional Student Education Exam. He trusted us to provide important value to his study process, and we love knowing that. My name is Austin, and along with the team at 240, I make videos that help teachers, or soon-to-be teachers like you, pass their exams and get in the classroom. This video is gonna prepare you for the FTCE Exceptional Student Education Test. That's number 061. This is a test that you need to pass if you wanna teach special ed in Florida. Today we're gonna to cover three things. What's on this test and how to study for it, the biggest concepts that you'll need to know going into it, and at the end, we'll work on some practice questions to really nail it down. Let's go live to our study guide on the ground for a special report. The FTCE Exceptional Student Education Test consists of six competencies. You'll need to have knowledge of foundations of exceptional student education, assessment and evaluation, instructional practices in exceptional student education, the positive behavioral support process, multiple literacies and communication skills, and the transition process. Each competency is worth between eight and 24% of the whole exam, and that equals 100 multiple choice questions in all. For each competency, let's discuss one of the most important key concepts that you'll need to know for your exam. We'll start with competency one, foundations of exceptional student education, which is worth the largest portion of the exam at 24%. You'll need to know a lot to lay the foundation for exceptional student education, including information about child development, the ESE process, ESE teacher roles, the roles of other professionals that work with exceptional students, and even court cases involving ESE. Now we have all of this covered in our comprehensive test-aligned study guide, of course, but for now, let's focus on one of the most important concepts that you need to know for this category. LRE stands for Least Restrictive Environment. This means that to the maximum extent possible, students with disabilities should be educated with their non-disabled peers. Basically, students receiving special education services should not be removed from the general education classroom unless it's necessary for their learning, which is not up to an individual teacher to decide, by the way. This must be determined by a committee based on an evaluation and outlined in a student's IEP, which of course stands for Individualized Education Program. In fact, once goals have been written for the student's IEP, determining the least restrictive environment for the student to work towards these goals is the next step. Okay, we've moved through those acronyms PDQ. So if you need to BRB for a little R&R or maybe a glass of H2O, that's A-OK. -okay. What, too many acronyms? Don't worry, there are fewer in the next competency. Competency two is all about different types of assessments and what they're used for. Expect to see terms like norm referenced, criterion referenced, diagnostic assessment, ecological assessment, curriculum-based assessment, progress monitoring portfolio, percentile rank, STANI. We interrupt this very long list with breaking news. Yes, I'm hearing that we're going to take a close look at these last two on an example assessment. These are students' results from a norm referenced math and reading assessment. The percentile refers to the percentage of test takers that fall below the indicated ranking. So in this example, the student performed better than 76% of test takers in math and better than 53% of test takers in reading. Standings are used to scale a test and provide a score of one to nine. The scale is based on the rank of the score, not the score itself. But even so, the higher the score, the higher the standing. So in this case, based on both percentile and standing, if asked which subject area the student is more likely to require remediation in, we can confidently conclude the answer is reading. Both the percentile and standing are significantly below those of the math performed. Oh, and here's a handy quick tip. It's very important to use a variety of assessments in exceptional student evaluation, even in your initial evaluation. Now, there's more to teaching exceptional students than just assessment and evaluation. Let's talk about instructional practices. Competency three covers different instructional strategies, such as peer tutoring, direct instruction, and student-directed approach. You're going to see a lot of questions that ask you to pick the best intervention or activity for students. Want to know a little secret for answering these? The most important aspect to focus on is the student's need. Be careful, more than one answer choice might be tempting. It might seem like a great activity for students, but your job is to find the one that aligns with the student's need and what they're trying to do. For example, an appropriate intervention for a student with an assessed weakness in reading comprehension would be to use graphic organizers to record key information from the text. This information aligns with the student's specific area of need. 
All right, we're gonna keep working our way through these competencies and I'm gonna keep sharing important info on the key concepts therein. But to really get the confidence that you deserve to pass this exam, subscribe to a 240 study guide. Okay, we've touched on the first three competencies. A flash, ladies and gentlemen, we are skipping down to competency five, which is the next biggest chunk. Yes, we'll pop back up to four and then we'll finish off with number six. Back to you, table of contents. For competency five, you'll need to know all about multiple literacies and communication skills. Be prepared to answer questions about students' reading skills and language development. You'll need to know basic language concepts, including the principles of language. Not quite sure what those are? Let's take a peek inside the study guide. All languages have basic principles that dictate the construction and patterns of words, sentences, and paragraphs. Morphology is the study of forms of words. This includes prefixes, roots, and suffixes. Each of these individual meaningful parts are called morphemes. Morphemes are a combination of sounds that have meaning in speech or writing and cannot be divided into smaller grammatical parts. Orthography is the conventions for proper spelling in a language. Syntax refers to the rules that govern the construction of words in order to make meaningful phrases, clauses, and sentences. Semantics is the study of meaning in language. It is all about the relationship between words and how we draw meaning from them. Pragmatics is the study of language in use, not in its structure or the appropriate use of language in context. Segmentation refers to recognizing the boundaries between words, syllables, or phonemes in spoken language. Are you like me? Do you like to study with videos? Are you kind of heavy into visual learning? Well, me too, and you can find plenty more in the 240 study guide. Let's keep this session going. Competency 4 is all about the positive behavioral support process. This competency is all about student behavior. You'll be asked about topics like contingencies in different contexts, different types of reinforcement, operant conditioning, and manifest determination, just to name a few. But let's go ahead and dive into one. Before a plan can be made with the intention of improving a student's behavior, data must be collected to understand that behavior. Along with the actual behavior, or what the student specifically says or does, antecedents and consequences are observed and must be documented also. The antecedent is what specifically happened before the behavior. This may be referred to as a trigger sometimes. The consequence is what happens directly after or as a result of the behavior. The behavior is also described in the following ways. Frequency is the number of times a behavior occurs in a given time period. Duration refers to how long a behavior lasts. Latency describes how much time passes between a prompt and the occurrence of the behavior. And intensity is the force with which the behavior occurs. This competency covers transitioning students out of special education services and into the next phase of their lives. Because as much time and attention as teachers will pour into their students, it'll eventually be time for them to leave the nest. <laughs> And as emotional as that may be, it's comforting to know that a plan must be established before a student receiving these services leaves high school. Something really important to focus on is community-based instruction, or CBI for short. CBI targets social interaction and reinforcement of academic skills in community settings, such as the local grocery or department store. For example, if a student masters the skill of making change in the classroom, an effective next step would be making change at the retail store or a restaurant. They can transfer their skills to a community-based setting, and that'll help the student prepare for life after high school. We've made it through the competencies. Man, I am proud of us. Now that we've gone over the big concepts, let's look at some practice questions to show you how those concepts are going to appear on our test. And if you want a lot of practice questions, click on that free practice test below. At the end, you get a score report with how well you did on the test, so you'll know exactly what to study once you move into the guide. Did I mention that the 240 study guide has a money back guarantee that you'll pass? I might have. Anyway, now for the questions. Remember the competency on foundations of exceptional student education? Let's look at a question about that. A parent of a student with disabilities informs the special education teacher that she is unable to attend the initial IEP committee meeting due to her work schedule. Which of the following would be the best next step? Proceed without the parent. Recommend that the parent rearrange the work schedule. Refer the parent to the campus administration. 
provide alternate dates to accommodate the parent's work schedule. Now, initially, we might think that this is the best choice. I mean, a campus administrator should be informed of all potential violations of IDEA's mandated free and appropriate education. However, we need to assume positive intent and give the parent a chance first. That means this is the best choice. Parental involvement is integral to designing an appropriate IEP. The special education teacher is responsible for engaging the parents to be active participants in the IEP process through collaborative parent conferences. A super helpful feature of our guide is that you always see feedback for incorrect answer choices when you're taking our practice quizzes. This helps you self-monitor and you can learn as you go. Now, let's look at another question together. This one is on assessment. A special education teacher is monitoring IEP progress on reading goals, on fluency and accuracy for a small group of fourth grade students. Which of the following is the best assessment procedure? This is the one we want. The weekly basis is essential for providing feedback and evaluating a student's progress so that the intervention can be adjusted if needed. Monitoring progress monthly is too much time. It wouldn't be effective for adjusting instruction if we needed it. What about those instructional practices questions? What do those look like? An inclusion teacher assists the sixth grade math teacher with individual and small group instruction for students with learning disabilities. Which instructional strategy would be appropriate to recommend when designing instructional lessons? Cooperative learning, group instruction, differentiated instruction, rote instruction, or whole group instruction. While whole group instruction is appropriate for introducing the instructional concept, differentiated instruction is the best choice. Differentiated instruction provides an opportunity for all students to participate in the general education curriculum. The teacher adjusts instruction to the student's current level. And what about those multiple literacies and communication skills questions? What do those look like? A second grade teacher is reassessing her classroom routines and practices to ensure that she is dedicating enough time to activities that will help build reading fluency for her students. Which of the following activities is not supporting her goal of improving student reading fluency? Asking students to summarize the stories they read is the only choice that does not directly improve students' reading fluency. Need to know more about fluency? Don't worry, we have it covered in the study guide. Here's a question from Competency 4 positive behavioral support process. What is the primary purpose of a functional behavior assessment, or FBA? Identify the purpose or reason that a student is demonstrating certain behaviors. Implement a plan of action to extinguish or replace certain behaviors. Prevent placement in a more restrictive setting. Collect data to prepare for dismissal from special education services. This is the one we want. Once the behaviors and reason why they are occurring have been identified, the IEP team can formulate a plan to target or replace the behaviors. And competency six, the transition process. Which of the following would be most helpful in aiding a high school junior with a mild intellectual disability to prepare for a job placement as a stalker at a retail business? This is our best answer. Sorting and arranging products would be an effective and applicable practice for a student's job as a stock person at a retail location. Now, that's just a small sampling of practice questions to give you an idea about how these concepts are assessed on the test. Folks, I'm receiving word that, yeah, yes, we have finished the whole video. Fantastic work to you and the team on the ground. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to learn, though. Did you know that thousands of teachers have passed their certification test using 240 study guides? If you want to make sure that you're absolutely fully prepared for the FTCE, Exceptional Student Education Exam, take the next step and subscribe to 240. It has hours of videos so you can watch or listen whenever it's convenient for you. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. And with the money back guarantee, you're gonna rest easy. Click the link below right now to get started.